Hi, Flick here from the Nerd Soapbox, and today we're at the Pasadena Comic Con, and uh, our next special guest is uh, best known to the Soapbox gang as the voice of Storm Shadow in the G.I. Joe cartoon series, and the voice of the Rebel Commander Juan Sato in the Star Wars Rebels cartoon. He's also Mr. Wu in the HBO live action ah. western song. <laughs> live action western series Deadwood. Yo Joe. It's Keone Young. Hey Keone. Hey Flick. Good. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Hey, how's your con so far? Uh not bad, not bad. Huh? I got here really early in the morning, so I'm just waking up now. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, okay. Uh Young and Flick, hang die. Hang die. Swedgen. Hang die. Flick. <laughs> Woo, hang die. Hang die. <laughs> I love that. It's just made my day. <laughs> I'm serious. All right, all right, all right. So, okay, growing up, uh, what were some of your favorite cartoons? Well, I go a long way back, so right. like, I think Barney Rubble and Fred <gasps> Flintstone were some of my favorites. Oh, yeah. I could laugh like Barney. Could you? <laughs> <laughs> Can you laugh yeah. like that in Chinese? Ha 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 ha! <laughs> uh, not as much. That's the Chinese version of Barney Rubble. <laughs> That's great. <I> love <laughs> okay, so uh, you know, I interrupted you. You like you like Flintstones? And, you yeah, Barney and Fred. Yeah, I was a great fan, of course, of uh, you know Coyote, <gasps> Wiley Coyote. Yes, yes. Right, and yep. the Road Runner. All right, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, okay. Uh, did you ever work with any of uh, the the uh, so-called uh, famous uh, cartoon voices? Well, of course, I grew up on uh, working with guys like Don Messick, and uh, oh. who was the voice of Scooby, I guess, the original. I, I love Scooby, too. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> worked with uh, Frank Welker, who is my, my a genius, yeah, yeah. who was my mentor. Oh, he's wow. the one that actually got me into voice work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, and the, the two things that were great about them yeah. was that they, they were great talents but they were also great human beings wow and uh, I worked on a show first called um, Duck Factory right. and it was a voice uh, it was a series about animated about cartoons right. and voiceover actors oh, okay. and Jim Carrey was in it that was one of his first jobs mm. I worked with Jim and uh, with Don Messick oh, wow that was great was it, okay okay the, was that uh, was that before or uh, after you and your uh, the w uh, Walla group? Oh, yeah, you know about yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you know too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w I started working in Walla groups. Uh, a lot of the scenes, like in a Chinese restaurant, right. before they would just go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, in the old days. Right. But then people were saying, no, you got to be authentic. Yeah, yeah. So they got really authentic Asian actors to portray okay. uh, the background sounds in like Japanese restaurants or Chinese restaurants and I was familiar with those sounds growing up in Hawaii so that's how I started remember all those kung fu movies that came out oh yeah yeah, yeah. I did a lot of well when if you know anything about kung fu movies they were from Hong Kong right and Hong right. Kong was a British colony okay so all the guys that dubbed the Hong Kong movies were sounding like hey let's go down to Wing Chun's factory eh? <laughs> it's like uh, Weird, he like seeing Chinese guys with British accents. Right, so they right. wanted real Chinese guys oh, yeah. to speak with the real Chinese accent. So it's like uh, I did a lot of Bruce Lee movies when they came out, and Bruce had a hard wow. time speaking English, if you if you recall. Right. And he would say, "Have some team at the Brath weight," and he said, oh, "No, no, it's Brath weight." <laughs> so we have to go in there and clean it up for Bruce a little bit. Have some team at the Brath weight. Have some, oh, I can't even do it. Have some tea, Mr. Brathwaite. Wow! Did you feel the wind blow? <laughs> <laughs> Never take your eye off of your opponent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, man. Hey, didn't, weren't you in the uh, Walla group with a couple of... Uh, Couple of so and so's. Oh, I started people. out with Robin Williams was in a is in a, wow. uh, started in a Walla group, and uh, and what was his name? Uh, Phil Hartman from the Saturday Night Live. Oh. Phil Phil was in the Walla group with me, wow. and uh, being with the Walla group, I got to work with a lot of really great people. I mean, I worked with like uh, Billy Wilder on a movie called Buddy Buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a scene that he shot in Hawaii and they All used right. some local Hawaiian actors. Okay. And they kept, the guy in the movie kept saying, 
oh, look at the full moon. And Billy would go, Mr. Young, what is a full moon? <laughs> and so I said, Billy, and Billy would call me in and say, Billy Wilder, and he would say, we need to hear full moon. So I had to go in there and say full moon in a Hawaiian accent. Uh, hey, brother, you see the full moon out there? <laughs> That's great. Because I'm from Hawaii, you know, I speak oh, yeah. Hawaiian. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Oh, so could you, just in case there's people out there, you know, that are watching, uh, don't know what a Wala group is, could you explain a little bit what a Wala group well, is? Well, in the old days, they they would record a movie scene without sound, just with the actors talking. Right. Everybody in the background would be just miming talking. It would... And so we had to go back in and fill the voices because you couldn't record like the ambient sound, that's what right. it's called, the atmosphere sound. Right. So a group of us would have to go in after the film was edited and do post-production work and we would like do the background voices. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> wow. And we made a lot of money doing it. Okay, okay, G.I. Joe, greatest American hero. Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. I did not kill your father. <laughs> wow. This <laughs> is like, take me right back to my, I was like this tall, right like that. Right. Like watching the cartoons. That was my first series, Big Voice, you know, it's like my first time, Storm Shadow, Ninja wow. Warrior. I was the original one. How do you, okay, what was it like working with such an awesome voice cast as the G.I. Joe cast? It, in those days, in 1985, right. it, was, it was much different. I mean, you know, it was, don't forget 1985 was the, the age of rock and roll oh, yeah. and everything goes. So we would get up there, we would really be the characters, these crazy characters, and we would get up there, people would be smoking in the room, <laughs> people would be arguing, fighting, <laughs> you know, oh. and, uh, but it was a really a bunch of great people and great, great actors. I didn't know how good some, you know, like Frank Walker would come in, they go, Frank, we need a rocking chair sound. And he go, is it made of wood <laughs> wow. or plastic or what? Is it an <laughs> antique? And Frank and, and you and Frank would actually do the sound of a rocking chair. Whoa. You know? That's and, amazing. Yeah, it was amazing, pretty amazing. So I learned from them that it was an actual craft. All right. You know, it's like building, it's like building a model ship. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. with all the delicate little pieces, you know, to make a cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, many of your roles uh, have been foreigners. Uh, they, they speak with accents. Yeah. Okay. How do you choose your roles? How do you choose the roles you accept? Well, the thing about it is, is in this modern day of age, All right. ever since, like, the civil rights movement and everything, okay. people wanted the real authentic sounds. They didn't want, uh, like if you recall the old Amos and Andy stuff, oh you know, um, people didn't want that anymore. People wanted the, uh, the truthful, realistic. We went into a period of realism. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, okay, so how did you keep, uh, how did you keep your voice uh, of Storm Shadow uh, from becoming a uh, kind of a parody of an accent? Well, you know, I grew up a lot on uh, Japanese movies like um, Seven Samurai, Yojimbo. All I love Toshiro Mifune. Toshiro Mifune. So when I grew up, I didn't, I didn't imitate John Wayne. <laughs> no, I would imitate Toshiro Mifune. Ramale, Shijinin no Samurai. That was scary. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the, the old Kung Fu movies, you know. <laughs> I will kill you! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. How did you... How did... Um, by the way, I love Star Trek. Star Trek was yes. great. Yeah. You, were, you were in two Star Treks. Yeah, I yeah. played Hoshi's father yeah. in the Enterprise. Yeah. And I was Buck Bukai, Buk Buk the uh, 25th century baseball player. In, Deep Space Nine. Uh, in Deep Space Nine, yeah. <laughs> wow. It was, it was a wonderful character, and I would like working on Deep Space Nine. Were you a fan of Star Trek before you got the uh, gig? Well, yes. Yeah. So when I was a kid, Star Trek, I watched the original things on air. And yeah. we didn't have color TV in my days. We were poor. So we watched it on black and white. Oh. Yeah. That's, how, we, well, that's how I remember Star Trek. Okay, okay. Um, you got to tell me about Mr. Wu, okay? 
Um, wait, you're playing the live action Mr. Wu on the HBO original Western series Deadwood. How did that come about? Well, it, Deadwood was, Chinese were a part of the growing of America. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we built the railroad, yeah. you know, we did the gold mining. And you wouldn't have chop suey if it wasn't for the Chinese in America. Oh, my grandmother. <laughs> right. She makes a mean chop suey. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so it was just a part of the American the story of the American development of the, from, uh, right, right. from the pioneer Western days into modern capitalistic society. And the Chinese had a hand in that because they would be traders, okay. merchants. And that was the growing of our, our country. How did and you get involved in uh, Deadwood? Well, a brilliant man by the name of David Milch right. uh, was writing it, and he wanted to, uh, in, some inclusion of that. And okay. Of course, um, you know there was it was a difficult time, and he wanted, and there were so many stories, but he wanted to include the immigrant right, right. story. Okay. You know, so I guess the Chinese were were pretty good. Yeah, that's a fantastic show. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I came up with a lot of my own stop because as as, uh, as a kid you know right. we used to live the life of uh, you know, amongst Chinese people the right. older Chinese immigrants and so if you remember I would go Swejin <laughs> Heng Dai oh yeah Swejin Wu Heng Dai which means like big brother Swejin was my big brother uh, and he and I would be Heng Dai like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that right who, who made the drawings for you when you tried to I did what? I did. I made the drawings myself. <laughs> I love oh, those yeah. drawings. Oh yeah. We had an artist come yeah. in and do it, but the, the the producer wanted the real thing, so he I, I did them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Flick. Keone. Hang Hang dai. Dai. <laughs> Hang dai. Wow. What are you working on now? Well, I just finished uh, the last part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Whoa. along with Usagi Yojimbo. <gasps> Uh, it was a great. I don't know if you know Usagi. You saw, you Hello, know Usagi? I got the I got a button right oh, here. Oh right, yeah. right, right. Usagi, yeah. he's oh, my, my favorite. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, me and uh, Usagi Yojimbo, uh, we did a collaboration uh, with the artist with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and that's one of the last things I've done. A lot of uh, also on camera stuff too. I mean, so like for adults, you know, right. like uh, I just worked with Kevin James and Ken, Kevin can wait, right, right, right. Madam Secretary. I love Kevin James. Yeah, he's is he funny. funny in real life? He's a great guy. He's a wonderful Fantastic. guy. A wonderful guy. Wow. Yeah. All right. Are you on social media? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So your fans can look and uh, see where you're going to be next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, geez, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Nice to meet you, Flick. Nice to meet. Nice to meet you. Okay, buddy. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, this has been Flick from uh, the Nerd Soapbox, and uh, let's see who else we can uh, see at the Pasadena Comic Con. Yeah. Hang die. Hang die. Hang die. <laughs> <laughs>
，你根本就冇散钱噶。Flicking young， 兄弟，兄弟，兄弟，兄弟。